I'm filming for the Garden Bioblitz today. My garden is located 15 minutes away from Nottingham city centre. Surrounded by lots of other gardens, it's a fairly urban place in an urban setting. And I'm going to be starting off in my shed and then working my way around the garden to find as many species as possible. So you might think this shed's a bit of an unlikely place to find wildlife. But you'd be surprised. It provides a shelter for a lot of wildlife. And in particular, I'm going to be looking for some of the more mammals. Now I've got with me here a trail cam. Now these are normally used in like jungles for, for big animals and or in the UK more commonly for tracking things like badgers and things like that. Now I don't have badgers in my shed, but years ago I did have a population of mice. Now I'm not sure what species they are and I don't even know if I've still got them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up this camera, leave it overnight and hopefully tomorrow morning I'll come back and we'll have some footage of mice. So we'll put the trail cam here. And that detects movement, so whenever any animal walks past that, it shines a light. It's not detectable by our eyes. Some animals can see it, but it doesn't bother all of them. Now, I've got a hole that comes up out of my shed, and this is where I think the mice are coming up. So that's where I've put the camera. It'll be really interesting to come back later and see what comes out. So this is a bottle trap. And what you do is you basically just get a normal uh, bottle, <laughs> chop the top off, invert it, stick it in, put a cane through, leave it in the water. And this is mainly designed for newts, but you can get all kinds of animals going them. Just make sure you leave a small air bubble as so the newts can breathe, and don't leave them more than a night because you can harm the animals. Now I've suspected that I've had newts for a long time. This is the first confirmed uh, one, so it's fantastic to see. Smooth newts, the males are a bit confusing because the males have a crest, like a great crested newt, although these guys are a lot smaller, have a lot more spots, and their belly's not quite as orange. <laughs> Females are a lot more duller than these guys. Um, they've got a lot more, obviously they don't have the crest, and they are a lot paler. But that's great to see this guy, so We'll just pop him back. I think we're going to see if we can find some more birds. So I'm going to have to go to an unusual hide to see them. So the reason I've got a pair of binoculars looking out the window is because I'm looking at some of the birds in my garden. Now they're not quite as tame as you get in other people's gardens, so rather than waiting out there and scaring them, I've come indoors and I'm just seeing what comes along. Oh, we've got a magpie now, just going on the fence. Oh, that's interesting. I've put some food out on the feeder, so he might come out onto that. And he is, great, okay. So we've got a few magpies that come around into the gardens and investigate what we've got, so that's interesting that they, they come into the garden. But one of the things that's come into the garden now is wood pigeons, and I do actually know about these guys, and we get a, a resident pair of wood pigeons, and they breed in the conifers here. They're not the best parents, because they often will knock eggs out and things. But they've been here for a few years now, and they're, they're one of the resident birds that comes into the garden and feeds. And I'm quite happy to, to leave them to it. You can tell wood pigeons apart from feral pigeons, or the pigeons that you see in town centres, as wood pigeons are slightly bigger, a lot more plump. And they haven't quite got that mottled plumage that feral pigeons have. One point is wildlife and pets. Come here. Come here, Jess. Now, there's no reason why you can't have wildlife and pets. Now, my garden's quite small. So a dog can be a problem with some of the birds and mammals. But it also depends on the individual animal. I see she brushes against here, scaring all the insects away. But um, things like cats, for example, I wouldn't say are overly great for gardens because they just have too much instinct and they just kill a lot of things. Dogs, I would say, depends on the size of the garden, depends on the wildlife. In terms of insects and amphibians and things, they probably won't bother them. Squirrels, bigger birds, maybe. It depends on the dog. Don't let it put you off having pets with wildlife, but it's just something to bear in mind if you're going to do that. So I'm looking around at night now just having a look at my garden because this is when everything comes out. Now we've had a little bit of rain. So this means that things like amphibians and some of the more slimy stuff starts to come out. One of the things I'm noticing, all over the ground are worms. 
earthworms in particular. They are to avoid drowning, they actually come out on the land, lie on rocks and things. If you come out at night with a torch, you can often see the worms. So the pond takes on a completely different character at night. Unlike reptiles, amphibians are a lot more nocturnal. So all the frogs, newts and toads that are normally hidden in the day will be crawling around at night. And I'm just looking down into the pond now. I can see a few common frogs resting in there. And these guys would have finished spawning now, so they'll be fattening up over the rest of the summer in the pond. And I've had great fun exploring my garden, finding all kinds of wildlife, and I hope you do too. So do get involved with the BioBlitz that's happening on the 1st and 2nd of June this year. See how much wildlife you can find in your garden. Just before I go, I just got to check that footage we got from the shed and see if we did get a mouse. So we'll just press play. Oh, fantastic, great. So, just have a brief glimpse of that. I would say that's a wood mouse. It's got quite springy legs, almost like a kangaroo, I suppose. Um, so that they're, they're fairly common in gardens, so that, that's great to see. So, now let's have a look at some footage that other people have done in their gardens. 